live demo portion of this afternoon. Emily McCracken, the resident chocolate sculptress and instructor at Lake Champlain Chocolates, graduated from Montserrat College of Art with a degree in 3D illustration. She has studied chocolate technique at the New England Culinary Institute, the Nodder School of Pastry Arts in Florida, and the Barry Kaibo Chocolate Academy in Illinois. She's created sculptures for celebrities including Wynton Marsalis, Ben and Jerry, Grace Potter, and Dr. Oz, and has been featured on the Food Network, in the Boston Globe, and in MasterCard's Priceless Picks campaign. She enjoys working with chocolate because it is universally loved, as we have discovered today. So let me turn it over to Emily McCracken. Thank you. All right, thank you guys so much. I'm so excited to be here. Uh, chocolate sculpting is probably my favorite thing to do on the planet, so I'm excited to share that with you guys here today. Uh, so the sculpture that I'm gonna be working on is a Day of the Dead themed chocolate sculpture. Um, I made a series of chocolate sculptures for our local art hop last year based on uh, Dia de los Muertos. Uh, it's a Mexican holiday uh, in which people celebrate deceased family members, friends, um, pets. Um, it's just a really lovely holiday to remember people in our past. So I figured this would be a great time of year since it is actually November 1st and 2nd. And there's going to be a sugar sculpting, decor decorating, um, sugar skull decorating workshop here, which I'm signed up for. I can't wait. <laughs> As soon as I saw it, I was like, I have to go to this. Anything to do with like candy and art, I'm there. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to start off by making a lot of flowers. Uh, during the Day of the Dead celebrations, they decorate uh, graves of their loved ones, and they also make altars called ofrendas, uh, and they decorate them with marigolds. So we're going to make some marigolds here out of chocolate. So what I have here we have some delicious white chocolate. I typically like to do white chocolate with my flowers because white chocolate can be colored, so I can make any color that I want to. Uh, the coloring that we are going to use to make our flowers is actually a colored cocoa butter. Chocolate really hates water, so you can't just use typical gel paste coloring or food coloring you would find in a grocery store. Uh, it needs to be no water. So this is actually cocoa butter, which is the fat of the cocoa bean. Uh, that's what gives chocolate uh, that really nice texture and is also the ingredient in chocolate that is critical to making it temper properly, turning it into a nice solid, shiny, snappy piece of chocolate. Um, so this white chocolate, we are going to color it with our cocoa butter coloring. I always want to put it in cups that won't stain because this definitely stains. Put some chocolate in here. Anyone smell the chocolate in here? We'll have to change that. We need some smell of vision up here for you guys. So I'm going to heat this up. So this I heat up into a liquid. And we're going to just squirt it in there. Just stir it up here. So we've now got a nice color for the marigolds, nice yellowy orange. So in order to make petals, you can actually do many different shapes of petals when you're working with chocolate. Um, it really depends on the type of implement you're using will change the shape of the petals. So this particular offset spatula is going to create a nice rounded edge. Marigolds have rounded edges, so I want to have um, a rounded knife. Um, also, if you wanted pointy, um, petals, like if you're doing a poinsettia or um, a black-eyed Susan or something like that, you could do a knife like this to give it a pointy edge. So depending on what shape leaf you want, you could do, or petal, you could do any sort of knife shape. You could do a big one, you could do little ones, um, but it's a very useful technique to make all kinds of things. I oftentimes will use this same technique to create feathers, uh, leaves on trees. Um, yeah, birds, definitely my favorite. I've made a ton of birds, and it's weird. I'm not even a bird person, but lots of my sculptures have had birds in it. <laughs> but that's a good thing. My daughter, who's four, is obsessed with birds. So to do petals, you're going to flatten your knife on. You're going to dip it in your chocolate. Smoosh it down, but not too hard. i got to put my hand in front of it. 
Yes, so this is just parchment paper that I've cut. Um, other things that you can use, sometimes if I want the backs of something to be very shiny, you could use um, an acetate, which is just a thick plastic. Saran wrap would be too flimsy. Most of the tools that I work with really aren't fancy chocolate equipment. I'm the only person in the company who does the chocolate sculptures. So we don't have a ton of equipment. So usually what I do is I just look around the factory and just try to find everyday things to make my sculptures. So I don't have um, a lot of fancy molds um, or tools. It's pretty much stuff that you can find in your house every day. And I find that that encourages me to be a lot more creative. Um, I'll look around and I'm like, oh, that mixing bowl, that looks perfect for a submarine helmet. And this one looks perfect for um, a spaceship or whatever I'm trying to sculpt that day. So I just walk around the factory. I kind of look like I don't know what's happening there, but I'm just trying to find that perfect piece to mold. So then what you're going to do after you make your petals is we want them to be curly. So we put them on these little plastic um, pieces here. They're called flower formers. Usually you find them in the cake decorating session, section of Michael's. Um, they'll use them for um, doing gum paste flowers and fondant flowers. Give them a little bit of a curve. So once we have all our petals, we can then go ahead and assemble our flowers. So you can only imagine how long it took to make all of these. <laughs> this was like, that was probably about an hour. All right, so to make our flowers, we're going to take a piping bag. This is just parchment paper. You can buy pre-cut cones in Michael's or any of those um, craft shops in their cake section, but it's a lot cheaper to make your own. So if you can learn how to make your own, you'll save a lot of money that way. So I'm gonna fold my paper cone. This took me a really long time to learn how to fold these. This is actually pretty challenging. <laughs> um, when I went to the Nodder School of Pastry Arts, um, well, or any of the classes that I've taken, especially at the Barry Calibo Chocolate Academy, where, is where I've taken most of my courses, I'm usually the only person who's not a pastry chef. So oftentimes, um, they just like zoom in there, they take all the supplies, they don't think I'm cool enough yet. They're like, she's not a pastry chef, she's not one of us. So the first day at lunch is a little lonely. But once I start sculpting and they see that I can keep up with them, the tools get shared a little more. But when I was at the Nodder School, all the pre-made piping bags had been taken. I was like, oh my god, what am I going to do? So I had to learn very quickly how to fold those bags. Uh, so it was, it was good that happened. It forced me to learn, because I used to go in the factory and ask my mentor to fold them for me. I'm going to squirt a little button of chocolate here. And I usually make an assortment of sizes of petals. So I'm gonna use larger ones. Here are my larger ones. So check this out, so cool. These are my little petals. And what I'm gonna use to help me out today is some freezing spray. When you hold chocolate in your hand, it melts, especially when you're standing in front of a large group of people. Your hands might be a little warm. So we're gonna use our freezing spray to kind of help freeze things in place a little bit so I don't have to stand there holding it while it's melting in my hand. Uh, this is totally food safe spray. Um, I ordered this from the same place I got my colored cocoa butter. It's called Chef Rubber. That's its real name, it's so weird. <laughs> um, I don't know why it's called that, but that's what it is. Um, but this is a totally food safe spray. If you are making a, sculpt a chocolate sculpture that people are not going to eat, a much cheaper alternative is you can actually use a computer air dusting can. You turn it upside down and it freezes it cold. So when we go to classes and workshops, that's what they give us to practice with when we're learning how to make show pieces because no one's going to eat it. But if people are going to eat it like today, one of you is going home with this sculpture. Do you guys know that? That's pretty awesome. But I don't bring it home for you. So good luck with um, carrying it home in the car. But it's going <laughs> to... <laughs> that does not come with the raffle prize. Um, but I'll tell you what, it's an adrenaline rush. When we brought um, my sculptures that are in the Sweet Tooth exhibit, we sat on milk crates in the back of the Lake Champlain Chocolates van, just holding them on our laps. It was a long drive, let me tell you. And then going up this bumpy road up here, 
was crazy. So, all right. So because I let this chocolate set up a little bit, which is good, it's kind of holding it for me. So you can kind of start to build your flower. Oops. Has anybody here ever worked in chocolate before? No, oh, we must change this. Chocolate is so fun, but you need a lot of patience for it. Chocolate is so temperamental. It has a mind of its own. It does what it wants to do. Basically, it owns you because chocolate is very sensitive to um, temperature. So if you're working in an environment that's really warm, it takes longer for things to set up. If you're working in an environment that's really cold, it's, going, it's setting up so quickly, so you have to move extra fast. Temperature in here is fabulous. I need to set up a permanent studio in here. This is awesome. <laughs> I do demos too at our Pine Street location at Lake Champlain Chocolates, and usually it's really hot and very crowded. Um, so making chocolate sculptures tends to be a little bit trickier when you're in such a hot environment. So you're gonna just keep going around until you build your flower and I have to remember to breathe. I oftentimes forget to breathe while making sculptures. <laughs> I know, it's like, oh yeah. Well, these petals, I mean, they're like, you know, they're very, they're thin, so they're very fragile. So I try not to break them while I'm working with them, but that's usually why I'll make thousands of them at a time because you can never have enough extra pieces. And the good news is there's always someone who's willing to eat them if there's stuff left over. So not a problem. And then you can just finish off with the final ones in the middle. So this is crazy. We're building a sculpture in 45 minutes, just so you know. Um, typically, sculptures take a lot longer than this. I mean, I've put at least 10 hours of prep work in this ahead of time. So this is definitely not something that typically happens in this short period of time. The sculpture that I did for Food Network was um, 40 hours worth of work for one piece, but it was five feet tall, and it weighed 65 pounds, and it was a working chocolate cuckoo clock. Wow. It was huge. It's the biggest thing I've ever made, and they're like, and we need it in like five days, because they had a really tight um, taping schedule. There we go. Well, unfortunately, it never got eaten. It went to the big compost bin in the sky. But let's see if I can pick this up without. So we're going to put this guy over here. And like any good cooking show, we've already got the casserole made. So I have tons of flowers for us to use. <laughs> All right. So the other thing I want to show you, hopefully I can keep this within time, is we're going to make some leaves. So this is the acetate that I was telling you about. This is actually um, for printmaking. I had a friend who took a printmaking class at Burlington City Arts and decided it wasn't for her. And she's like, do you want this? I was like, yes, that's like gold. I do want that. So we're going to make leaves. Leaves are typically green. Although in the art world, you know, you can do whatever you want if you're an artist. Get really creative. But we're going to go green. So I'm going to take my cocoa butter, and we're just going to smear it right on there. I won't lie, it's super fun. Anytime I get to make a mess, although the problem is I always have to clean it up. I do a lot of dishes at work. <laughs> so if I had anything to say that wasn't fun about chocolate sculpting, it would definitely be doing dishes. So. All right, 
So you can do different things with this. If you wanted to um, actually color chocolate first and pipe it on here, if you wanted really specific designs, you could pipe it ahead. Um, you could take a paintbrush. You could paint this on the acetate um, if you wanted really specific designs. I'm just doing leaves, so I just need kind of a basic um, green color. So just to show you. So we've got our green color on the background. And if you're going to layer color, you should actually start with your lightest color first, because whatever color you put down first is the one that's going to show up on the top. You're basically building layers. So if you were doing multiple colors, you would start with the lightest one and then end on your darkest one. So the next thing we need to do is pour some white chocolate on here. Again, I mean, you can use any of the chocolates. You can use any of the chocolates that you want, but white chocolate shows the best um, color out of all of them. Get a little bit more in there. Usually I have like a ladle or something. I was trying to pack light. Okay. So once you get your chocolate on there, you're gonna take your offset spatula and you wanna spread it really thin because leaves are pretty thin. I didn't put enough chocolate on here, but um, you want to cover the whole thing in white chocolate. So the tricky part that's going to happen is you have to wait for this to almost dry. If it's too dry and you try to cut any chocolate, it shatters into pieces. If you wait till it's, it's, while it's too soft, it's, the chocolate's just going to melt back into itself. So the trick is getting it to a point where um, it's sort of fudgy in texture. So once this gets to the desired fudginess, for lack of technical term, to get to that, if it depends on the thickness, I would say um, if I'm doing thin pieces like this, probably within five minutes you're going to get that texture. If I'm doing thicker pieces, like the piece you're going to see in a little bit when I cut slabs, I move it into our cold room. I'm so spoiled, we have a cold room. Uh, it's about 30 degrees in there, and it's a dry cold, and it's gonna get my thicker chocolate to a fudgy texture in about 10 minutes or so. But you have like the tiniest window to cut it in. So oftentimes people will see me running through the factory like crazy being like, oh my gosh, it's time, the chocolate's ready. Because while I'm working on one thing, something's cooling in the other room. So um, I'm tr I try to multitask while I'm sculpting, um, but then sometimes I forget that pieces are waiting in the cold room for me. So then what you're going to do is cut right in the fudgy chocolate your leaf shapes. So by cutting them ahead, this will release them from the plastic. So I don't know if I'll be able to hold this up because it's not totally dry yet, but you'll cut your leaves right into the chocolate. You could use a cookie cutter, definitely. I find it doesn't work as good for thicker pieces of chocolate. It gets stuck in there. Um, but for thinner pieces, you could definitely do that. All right, so we're going to put this guy over here. Oh, look at that. <laughs> How did that happen? So I'm going to roll it up once it's in that fudgy state. If it's too hard when you roll it, it's just your leaves are going to break into a bunch of pieces. So we're going to roll it because we want the leaves to kind of have a little bit of curl to them, so it gives it a little bit more of a natural appearance. And I was hoping this wasn't going to come apart in the car. I'm like, every pot home, like, ooh. Okay. See? Look at that. So what happens is we can peel this plastic off. I'm just going to stick that down there. This is my favorite part. So they're just like falling out. So the reason I put it on this plastic is not only to transfer the color of cocoa butter, but it makes it very shiny. So when you pour chocolate onto a plastic surface like that, it's going to give it that extra sheen. So chocolate is shiny in general if it's tempered properly, but the plastic is going to give it much more of a sheen. So then you've got your leaves, and just by smearing the color on there, I think it just gave it enough of that sort of leafy 
color and texture that I was looking for. So now, what was that? Um, you could, I probably would, ju I'm just gonna leave them this way. I break them apart. Um, I could potentially would be cool is to scratch right in it if I wanted to give it that veiny appearance. Um, but you, you could definitely do that. One other way I like to do leaves is for another sculpture I did recently, you can actually paint real leaves with chocolate. So you find a leaf, make sure it's super dry before you do it. Take a paintbrush and you actually are gonna paint chocolate directly onto that real leaf. Let it completely dry. Once it's dry, you peel the leaf off and you're left with, it shows all the beautiful veins in the leaves and all of those textures. So you could do real leaves if you really wanted to. But for this one, I wanted it to be, um, this is a little bit more representational. So we've got our leaves ready now to add to our flowers. And we're gonna start assembling our sculpture. So this is the part where the breath holding will begin. Okay. Okay. Parchment paper down. I have a tarp behind me, like I am ready to make a huge mess if I need to. No, I won't, I promise. All right, so this is the base of our sculpture. Whoever wins this, I hope you like chocolate because you're gonna be eating chocolate for a really long time. So this is a hollow box uh, that is all made of 54% semi-sweet dark chocolate. Typically when I do chocolate sculptures, I always like to use dark chocolate as my base. It is the strongest of all the chocolates. Because it doesn't have the dairy products that milk and, dark, uh, milk and white chocolate have, it's much sturdier in its structure. So typically, I'll make any bases out of dark chocolate. White chocolate's gonna be the softest out of the three chocolates because it has the highest fat content. It's probably why it tastes really good. So what I did to do this base was I glued um, some of these chocolate slabs together with liquid chocolate, of course. And to decorate the sides, this is one of my favorite things to do. So to do this, I do this oftentimes if I'm doing trees or if I want just some sort of texture. Because when you're making sculptures, you want to have a really nice balance of textures throughout your piece. You don't want it to be all smooth and shiny. So the um, painting the chocolate on gives it that nice texture and it's really fun. <laughs> so I had to do it. So I'm gonna glue my top part on. I've got my 54% dark chocolate here. I forget how awesome it is to work around one ton tanks of chocolate. We have four one ton tanks of chocolate in the middle of the factory that I pull chocolate from on a daily basis. I'm like, wow, I forget how cool that is because I do it every day. I'm like, wow, I, I could spill literally a ton of chocolate on the floor right now, which would not not be looked highly upon, um, but it's, it's been done. I was giving a tour, I used to be a tour guide at the Lake Champlain Chocolate Store, and I was giving a tour, and all of a sudden the tank was overflowing. Someone had overfilled it. It was going down the sides of the tank, it was all over the floor, and then the people on my tour were asking, why are they not cleaning it up right away? Well, the reason is hard chocolate's a lot easier to clean up than wet chocolate. <laughs> so we let it, um, we let it harden, and then you just take a, we had a scraper, I don't know if it actually was a hoe, and just scraped it up off the floor, so it's a lot easier that way. Okay, so I'm gonna glue, this is my base piece. I'm gonna put this to the side for a second, and we're gonna start building our main piece. So we're gonna put this up on top. This is, again, dark chocolate. My sculptures range from a really wide variety of, I don't know, dimension. I do ones that are completely three-dimensional. I made this crazy turkey. It was like this big, 
and it took 18 hours, and it was totally three-dimensional. It was really cool. Um, and then I do um, just simple things like little chocolate frames, or I'll do combination sculptures, kind of like this one, where it's a little bit of 2D and 3D. I don't. Well, I do, um, everything that I make is for um, Lake Champlain Chocolates. They'll essentially kind of commission me, which means do my job, um, and make sculptures for different occasions. So I'll do, I usually do a Valentine's Day demo, I'll do a Christmas one. Um, I do the art hop every year in the south end of Burlington. I usually do a whole sculpture exhibit for that. Um, so I don't take special orders, which is such a bummer, but hopefully someday um, I can do that. But for the time being, I just do stuff for the company. So we've got some skulls. We need some sugar skulls made out of chocolate. So these are white chocolate with colored cocoa, white chocolate that's been colored with the color, colored cocoa butter. So we have a few different ones here. We've got some with the eyes cut out of it right there. I made all of these in advance. Oh my gosh, this actually took a really long time because you have to go through, pipe all your designs in the dark chocolate, mix each color individually, and then pipe it into all of these pieces. So in order to get this done on time, um, I definitely had to do this in advance. So I'm gonna glue some chocolate on here. For the skulls, I did them all kind of at different times. I would say at least a couple hours, probably, in order to do those. Let's glue this one on. Got to look at the placement. Make sure you place them in not strange places. So I'm just gluing this on with liquid chocolate. Who needs glue when you have chocolate? So the reason I'm going to glue these on now is because gluing anything vertically, really terrible. Um, I mean, I'll be able to do some with the freezing spray, but heavier pieces like these skulls, I'd rather just do ahead of time um, so I'm not uh, watching my piece slide down. It basically looks like it's crying because it's sliding down. All the chocolate is just very unhappy. So I've got all my skulls on here. Just gonna give them a quick little zhuzh. I think that's a Rachel Ray word. Okay, so I'm gonna put the flowers on. Let's, let's try vertical. Let's be crazy. All right. I gotta get this done in 45 minutes. <laughs> Okay, so hopefully, actually while these are setting, maybe I'll glue the front pieces on just to be sure. So the other things that I made, um, typically when um, people are decorating for Day of the Dead, they have these strings of these beautiful paper flags. So I made some of those out of chocolate, of course. So we've got some little flags here. These I hand piped. Last year when I made some, I cut them out of modeling chocolate. Um, you can use modeling chocolate is basically when you mix chocolate with corn syrup, it turns it into a pliable dough. I like using modeling chocolate a lot because it allows you to really sculpt. Like it allows you to use it like a clay. You can do anything in it. Um, but the thing with modeling chocolate is, does it taste good? I mean, it does, it, it tastes kind of like a Tootsie Roll more so, but plain chocolate like this, I feel like has just a better mouth feel um, and just tastes better in general. So I try to only use modeling chocolate um, if I really need to sculpt some fine details, but usually I'll try to use regular chocolate. So the paper flags can be anything. They'll do like hearts and skulls and flowers. Um, there are a lot more elaborate cut than this one, but I'm working in chocolate, so we have to compromise just a little bit. <laughs> so I'm gonna glue some of these on. Let me grab another flower one. 
Oops. Packing these guys was tricky. I also stole all of the factory's bubble wrap before I left today. <laughs> I love Saturdays because no one's in there. I was like, great, I'm gonna get all the supplies I need today. Um, what did I do with the piping bag? Oh, there it is. Okay, so we're gonna glue these on. Sometimes when your bag gets stuck, like the chocolate hardens in the end, you can just kind of purge the end. You can kind of squeeze that set up chocolate in it. So far, I've remained pretty neat, only a little bit of chocolate. I just, I need to order some new chef coats, and I asked my boss if this time um, I could do a color. I'm like, white shows chocolate so badly. I think that's the point of a chef coat, <laughs> is it's supposed to show that you work super neat. I've gotten better, let me tell you. Especially when I found out I was the one who had to do the dishes, like I got real neat. I got good at not, <laughs> I got super good at not needing to use dishes. Most of the time what I'll do is I'll open the valve on the tanks and I let the chocolate just spill out and make big puddles on the sheet trays instead of filling a pitcher and then dumping it. That was like my favorite thing I ever did. When I taught classes, we used to have an education kitchen um, at South End Kitchen and I taught a chocolate bar making class. I had to wash 25 molds by hand every single class. That was not fun. Teaching, amazing. Cleaning chocolate mold, really not. Okay, so we'll glue these on. I think I'm gonna give a little dollop of chocolate right there. Can you have too much chocolate? I don't think so. Okay. Ooh, this perfectly fits three. I love when that happens. Okay. I do, I do sketches. Um, oftentimes I will do a lot of research for what I'm doing. Um, so for the research for this one, I found this amazing kids book at the library. Um, and the pictures were amazing and it really explained the holiday well. So. I go look at books, I get online. Uh, one of the things that my illustration professor told me when I was in school, he's like, research is so important because if it doesn't look believable, no, one, no one's gonna believe it. So it, you need to do that research and really understand what it is that you're making. Um, I just did for Art Hop a series of sculptures um, called, it was the Great American Road Trip. So I featured the East Coast, I did Route 66, Las Vegas, and what was the other? Yellowstone National Park. So I actually looked up the um, Yellowstone National Park sign so I could replicate it properly. I tried to find a hotel on Route 66 that really exists. So the Blue Swallow Motel is in New Mexico. And it was so cool, they let me put it on their Facebook page. So they were hoping I was gonna mail it to them. <laughs> but that sculpture wasn't going anywhere. Okay. So now we've got our flags on. Now I feel like I can put this up. So now this is the super scary part. So although I've done bigger sculptures, that's the, when I was doing the Food Network one, I had to put a huge cuckoo clock on top of the stand that was about this high. I didn't know if it was gonna hold. It was the day of the taping. It's like, oh my gosh, chocolate gods, please be with me today. And they were. I put it on top and it stayed and we had it up for like a year. It held up just fine. Okay. So now we're gonna stick, stick this up in here. This is where I wish I actually was an octopus and had lots of arms. I'm gonna give these a little bit of a brace. Ooh, that's close. No. Oh, I'm, I'm used to it, it's okay. So I'm gonna put little chocolate braces behind it because I care about whoever brings this home today. Okay. 
Ooh, we're gonna reinforce. I wanna turn this so you can kinda see. Let's just move the whole paper. Let's not risk it. All right, I'm just gonna fill another piping bag. I'm going to say at least 10. 10 pounds of chocolate. Hope whoever gets this is super hungry. Because I, like I said, delivery does not come with the raffle. I want you to experience what my life is like on a, a weekly basis. The furthest I've been was when I did um, a chocolate sculpture for the Dr. Oz show, and we had, to, we had to, we made a special box for it, and we had to drive all the way to New York City with this sculpture in the car. Longest ride of my entire life. Plus, we're in, you know, downtown New York City. We're going to 30 Rock is where he films. Oh my gosh, it was terrifying. Um, I did, uh, they wanted me to do, I did the Dr. Oz logo, and then I also made a sculpture about the health benefits of chocolate. Yeah, it was, it was a really cool experience. Um, I did get in trouble with security, however. I wanted to go to the top of the rock, and I had my sculpting kit with me, and I had a knife in there. So they took my knife away. It was my good one, too. No, he threw it in the trash. Yep, I was like, I swear it's for chocolate. Cause I, you know, you have to bring a repair kit. I know, I mean, that was a good knife. It was, it was the same as my, um, wherever that one went. It's the same as my little paring knife. Okay. Well, they're saying that you should eat an ounce a day. An ounce is about a third of, a, of our standard size chocolate bars at Lake Champlain Chocolates. Our typical bar is about three ounces, so it's about a third of that. And it's just solid dark chocolate, and they're saying chocolate that's 70% or higher is where you're gonna get the antioxidants. Um, so that does not include, which I've really made some people sad, it does not include truffles, caramel, creams. Um, it's just solid chocolate. Um, I suppose nuts wouldn't be so bad. Nuts are, um, they've got protein in it, so you could do like a dark chocolate almond bark if you wanted to. Um, but 70% or higher is where you're gonna get those antioxidants from. So it was really about that. It's good for, um, I'm trying to remember, it's been a long time since I gave tours because um, now I make chocolate more. Um, but I think it's supposed to be good in helping to lower blood pressure. Um, one thing that I always joke about, but kind of true, it's good for the soul. <laughs> happy people. It's important to be a happy person. It's very unhealthy to be an unhappy person. So you can see, we've got lots of flowers made here. And we're going to try to glue them on vertically because why not? Okay, I like the orange ones. We'll go with those first. My personal favorite chocolate is, I'm doing this backwards. You know what? There we go. Good flower. Whoops. That will fit on there. Will you fit in there? Oh, yeah, you will. And you've even got a little brace from the skull. One good thing about chocolate sculpting is you learn to become very ambidextrous. 
Also, being a chocolate sculptor, your four-year-old is obsessed with your job. <laughs> she loves telling all her classmates how her mommy works at a chocolate factory. So cute. Oh my God, she is. The other day, she goes, Mommy, I want to be a cooker when I grow up. I have her every Wednesday, and we bake every Wednesday. Whoops, we're sliding. No problem. I just wanted to make sure you guys were still paying attention. Okay, let's get some more. Pink one. Question is, is that going to fit? Ooh, that like just fits, great. So oftentimes, I mean, I'll do a sketch, but it doesn't always, it doesn't always come out the same way. Sometimes, you know, Things change as you're working on it. Oops. Just broke a petal. That's OK. That's why we make lots. We'll make lots and lots of flowers. Definitely want to make sure you don't stick your face in front of this or your hands. like. <laughs> Sometimes I'll have people helping me. I'm like, just watch your face while we're doing this. Let's get some leaves on. Oh, and then I forgot the coolest part we're going to put on there. I'm so excited. I never thought in a million years I was going to be a chocolate sculptor when I grew up. And it's pretty cool. It's very hard to find a job in art. So I'm really, I feel very fortunate that I found one and such a delicious one to do. I just feel like chocolate brings so much joy to all people, like most everybody. I've met a few people, believe it or not, who don't like chocolate. Like, what are you doing in Lake Champlain chocolates right now? Um, but. <laughs> I've had people come in, they're like, yeah, I don't really like chocolate. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that's really kind of weird. Uh, the only thing I've ever done in school, we, I took a three-dimensional illustration class, and we sculpted in vegetables. I've done some vegetable sculpting. Um, but I'm trying to think if I've done anything else. I mean, I do cakes, um, but that's about it. Got to try some butter sculpting, maybe. That seems really hard. Mm -hmm. So the debate over white chocolate is real. Um, but what I will say, white chocolate, technically white chocolate is chocolate if it contains at least 33% cocoa butter. Cocoa butter can only come from the cocoa bean. So chocolate can't be chocolate without cocoa butter. So if white chocolate has at least 33% cocoa butter, you can consider it to be chocolate. That's how, that, that's how we feel. Um, <laughs> I think it's pretty legit. Um, I am a huge fan of all chocolate. Let's use our new flower we just made. It depends on what's in it for me. I seriously will eat just about any kind of chocolate. The only thing I don't like, nobody make fun of me too much, I don't like mint and chocolate. I know that's weird. I, I think it's like after I was pregnant and I just didn't feel great every morning and I was eating mints to make myself feel better, like that's all I associate it with. I feel like mint ice cream is like toothpaste ice cream. My husband loves it. He's like, I don't get it. But at least that means more for me. But mint is not my favorite in chocolate. But just about anything else I'll eat. My favorite Lake Champlain chocolate product is our hazelnut five-star bar. My god, I'm obsessed with hazelnut. If there is hazelnut in it, I will eat it. I will eat all of it. The other weird thing. 
don't tell anyone. I also am not a peanut butter fan. <laughs> don't like peanut butter. I don't. I know that's so weird. Everybody likes peanut butter, except for me. I would rather put Nutella on a sandwich. If I <laughs> Or, uh, you know, I like almond butter as well. All right, let's get some more leaves down here, and then I'm going to show you my last part. I'm worried I've gone over time. I did not wear a watch today, so I apologize if I've gone over. Sometimes I just get in the zone and I forget what's happening. Let's put one down here. Oops. That's a little too scary. I have to remember you have to take this home with you. So I'm just going to do a couple little dots around my edge. So one thing that we're missing from our display here is we need some candles. They oftentimes will um, light candles. We're going to make some chocolate candles because everything I make is chocolate. Chocolate really was a perfect medium for me. When I went to art school, art school was rough, let's face it. Um, I started at Alfred University majoring in ceramics. My parents were really excited. <laughs> My dad's like, you're going to be a potter. <laughs> My father is a veterinarian, so <laughs> he can't even draw a stick figure. So he was like, well, it, it's your life. So I went to school there, and everybody was really focused on throwing pots, um, working on slab work, and doing glaze, experimenting with glazes. But not me. I loved to sculpt people and animals and creatures, and I painted everything in acrylic paint. I used no glaze. So finally, my teacher came up to me at school, and he was like, Emily, I don't think your work belongs at this school. He was like, I think you belong in an illustration program. So I transferred to Montserrat College of Art after three years at Alfred. Went for another three years. I should be a doctor by now. <laughs> I like to say I'm a doctor of chocolate. But when I got to Montserrat, they didn't have a ceramics department. So, and then doing illustration, everybody was painting and drawing. I was like, oh my god. I'm such a weirdo here. What am I going to do? So I drew and I painted, and they were not as awesome because that's not what I do. So finally one day, I got tired of being the one who had the worst piece in the class, and I sculpted. I bought some air dry clay, and I made my piece. And Fred, my professor, he was like, oh my god, throw your canvases away. Throw your, your paper away. He's like, you need to be sculpting. And so the problem was we didn't have a ceramics department, so I always had to use air dry clay. If any of you have ever worked with it, it's horrible. It's very brittle, falls apart really easily. So I had a lot of broken pieces. Um, I didn't have much survive the end of school, but as long as they made it to the critique, I was good. Um, but that piece that I made for the first time ended up in the senior show, and I was considered a sophomore um, just based on credits and stuff. Um, so that piece really changed me. Um, so I just basically had to make my own medium there, and it works well with chocolate, because chocolate is also brittle, fragile, terribly dangerous. <laughs> um, so it just really was a fitting way to go. Um, to go. It was a great direction to go into. Okay. So... Yes. <laughs> uh, the first piece I ever made was actually out of modeling chocolate, and I had made a griffin. I know, it's kind of crazy, but Alice in Wonderland is my favorite story. I own 30 editions of Alice in Wonderland. Um, and the griffin's a character in it, so I just felt like that was a really good way to go. So I'm going to finish off with making a candle. 
So I was saying to you that I don't really have special fancy molds. So I look around, and these are our sample cups for hot chocolate. Is this not the perfect votive size? It's perfect. Couldn't believe it when I found it. So what we do, again, I don't have a ladle here, so we're going to use the spatula. But if you're not getting messy, then you're not having any fun. That's the way I look at it. That's the way my four-year-old looks at it. OK. You know what? We're almost done. OK. So in order to make your votive, you're going to fill the, ch the cup with chocolate. Like, it's completely full. If I tip this, it's going to go all over the place, but it's totally full. So what you're going to do is um, I took these and I put them in the refrigerator for probably three, four minutes. You don't want it to completely solidify. So what you're going to notice, um, the process that I'm going to talk about is called shell molding. So if you ever want to make a hollow vessel, like doing this is a great idea if you want to fill a chocolate cup with a mousse or a ganache or some sort of alcohol. You could do shots out of these little cups be great out of chocolate, then you get to eat it when you're done. Um, you can put ice cream in it. Um, so hollow vessels, really useful technique. So what you're going to do is as this is beginning to dry, you're going to notice the edges dry faster than the middle. So when you see a little ring around the outside forming that's hardened, depending on how thick you want it, you're going to then dump the rest of the chocolate out. So when you see the ring around the top, then you're going to just dump the middle back out. Actually, I mean, this is going to be a little thinner because it wasn't set yet, but it's going to leave a shell of chocolate around the outside. Then you're going to let that set completely. Oh, look, it's done. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and then you pop it out, and you've got a perfect little clear votive. So one thing that I did have to do to this um, is I took a knife and I, car I just trimmed it up a little bit. I wanted to make sure that um, my hands are a little warm. Let's put some gloves on. So I took a knife and just cleaned up the edges because the edges were a little bit messy when I poured it out. And then here's, so I went to Christmas tree store and I bought a bunch of these little, make sure that they're LED. LEDs are not hot. If you buy regular, you're going to melt, really melt your candles. You might want to be going for that effect. I'm not sure. But um, you're going to put these on. You can dump them right in. And you could. You can light up your little ofrendas. When chocolate hardens, what's awesome is it shrinks. So it just pops right out. And it was tempered properly. If the chocolate wasn't tempered, it could very easily stick in your mold and it's not going to come out. And it's really unpleasant to have to clean that. So um, I don't want to put it in front of the skull, but there we go. So now you can have your own little shrine made out of chocolate. So it's cool, at the end of your dinner party, everyone could eat the candles if they wanted to. <laughs> you know, have one of those things where it's like, is it or is it edible? You could dye the chocolate too if you wanted to have colored candles. I've made blue ones before, you could do pink ones, any color you want, you could make the candles, and it will give a little bit of that light. Um, yeah, the candles were my favorite. The sculpture that I did last year that really had the candles was I made um, a shrine, a typical shrine used in um, Day of the Dead. And it was a little shrine to my dog. He passed away last year. So I made a little shrine for him, and I had the candles in it. And it just the light in it really made a big difference. It just created a mood. And I feel like it really resonated with people. Um, and that's what this holiday was really about. So it was just really fun to be able to um, share a little bit of that with People. A lot of people didn't know what Day of the Dead was, so I was really excited to educate people on such an amazing holiday. So that is my sculpture, and one lucky person will be taking this home. Um, do you guys have any questions?
questions about anything for me? Thank you. <laughs> Um, well, the sugar skull, the skulls are representing um, the people who have passed. And then typically on the sugar skulls, they'll often write the names on the forehead of the people that they're celebrating. So it's representing the, the actual people who have passed. But they do um, sugar skulls, and they also do candy, uh, chocolate skulls as well. Um, and then they also make, I'm, I haven't, I've never made bread. I can't believe I'm saying this, I've never made bread. Uh, but they make a, a bread called pan de muertos, and it's this like sweet bread that has like little bone shapes on top, and it's got an orange glaze, and it's kind of like an anise flavored bread. And they'll usually put those in the the altars as well as an offering to um, the people who have passed, and then they also make a loaf for themselves to eat as well. But my bread baking skills are not there yet. <laughs> <laughs> I stick to chocolate right now. <laughs> No. Uh, and then, oh, by the way, you're a great sculptor? Yeah, it's crazy. I was out of college, and most college kids are pretty broke when they're done school. So I had to move back home. Uh, Montserrat College of Art is in Beverly, Massachusetts, near Salem. So I moved back home, and I was just walking up and down Church Street, just trying to find a retail job. And I had a stack of applications. I wanted some chocolate. Went into Lake Champlain Chocolates and bought a hazelnut truffle, of course, because hazelnut. And they were like, oh, I see you have applications. You should apply for a job here. I was like, all right. And it was between Lake Champlain Chocolates and The Gap. And Lake Champlain Chocolates <laughs> won. Um, I do love clothing, but I do love chocolate a little more. Uh, so I started there, and I became the manager of the Pine Street store a couple months later. And Gary, my supervisor, he was like, wait, you do three-dimensional illustration out of clay? I bet if you can do clay, you could also do chocolate. So he sent me in the factory to kind of mess around and see what, see what I came up with. And I came back with my Griffin. He's like, yeah. He's like, we're doing this. So they sent me to different courses. So it was great. I got to go down to Florida. I got to go up to Canada multiple times. Um, hopefully, I'm going to be taking another showpiece class next year. Um, so yeah, it just, it's weird how sometimes life just takes you in these directions. I never expected to do that. And when I applied at Lake Champlain Chocolates, like my sculpture background really wasn't even brought up in my interview or anything. So I've been there for 15 years. So I was 24 when I started. <laughs> I turned 40 this year. Oh my God. Um, <laughs> So yeah, I've been there for 15 years, and I was the manager of our retail store for about 12 of those years. Um, and I would do sculpting in amongst managing the store. And then I had my daughter in 2013, and I didn't want to work five days anymore. I wanted to cut down to four days. And you can't really be a manager and not work five days. And I was like, totally fine with that. Um, so when we opened Southland Kitchen, I was able to teach courses there. I did all the chocolate making classes. I did a kid's chocolate sculpture class, which was my favorite class of all kids made the most amazing sculptures. And they had fun, and all the parents were just like, I've never seen my child so focused, ever. <laughs> you know, chocolate just does that to people. Um, so we did shut that down, unfortunately. Um, but we'll hopefully be, someday, we'd like to open another chocolate education center, because the chocolate classes were the most successful. Um, but I work in all of our retail stores. I work at Church Street a lot. I make caramel apples. I made 300 last weekend and 240 this week. And I dip things and I make marzipan. And so I do all kinds of things. Sometimes I'm working behind the counter. Sometimes I'm making sculptures. Sometimes I'm making apples. So you'll catch me in all different jobs there. Oh, it's the saddest question ever because they usually make their way to the compost bin afterwards because they're usually sitting out. They're not in these amazing cases that we have here that we need to buy some of those because they're awesome. Um, Jim's thinking about it. You guys really inspired him. He's like, we need a case. Um, they're out, they're exposed, you know, so they get dusty and it says not to touch them, but people touch them anyway. So 
and I usually leave them up. Um, some I just leave up for a couple months. I have some at the Church Street store. I have one that is three years old, still up, totally fine. Would I eat it? No. But, I mean, it's not moldy or anything. Like, it really just, dark chocolate has no dairy in it. So, essentially, it could last forever, really. So, there's nothing in it that really spoils in plain dark chocolate. So, that's why I like to use it, because it lasts a really long time. You could eat this. You can eat that, too. No, you can eat that, too. I peeled the plastic off. You can eat all the, except I would not recommend eating the LED lights. Probably not tasty. <laughs> but you can eat everything else. Yep, totally edible. So you got to have a big party, and everyone can just break off pieces. I used to do Taekwondo, and I made a, ta a sculpture for our Taekwondo Christmas party. It was so cool. One of the black belts got in position, and he punched right through it. It was so cool. It was great. <laughs> the guy... <laughs> The poor guy really bruised his hand doing it, but it looked really cool, and it shattered into pieces, and everyone just got to eat the pieces afterwards. That was like probably my, the coolest way to eat a chocolate sculpture. <laughs> just punch through it. 